It's week 22 of the NHL season and the script writers absolutely cooked this week. We got a storybook comeback with an NHL legend, return of the heavyweight belt, and some Oscar-worthy acting. The script was wild for this week, so let's cover everything that happened in this video. Sunday, showtime is back. The early game saw the Bolts take on the Devils, and with Devils coach Lindy Ruff in the hot seat with fans right now, every game for Jersey is a must win with them chasing the last wildcard spot. The Lightning, however, have a Kucherov, and the man is pretty much a lock for two points a night. In this one, he said, screw it, I'll double that, and all four Lightning goals coincided with four Kucherov points. He hits 100 points on the season, and the Devils eat another L. The Battle of Pennsylvania was an absolute barn burner, and three things are guaranteed in this life. Death, taxes, and Sidney Crosby absolutely torching the Flyers. Crosby scored a goal and had three assists in this one, as he continues to have back pain from carrying the Penguins. The defense in this one was caliber of a Tuesday night 11pm beer league game, and while it certainly drove the coaches mad, it made for some pretty entertaining hockey, as the Penguins took this one 7-6. Then we had our main event, which was the Detroit Red Wings versus the Chicago Blackhawks. Man, did I ever get roasted in last week's recap video for glossing over the Red Wings, but you better be damn sure that we'll be talking about them now. Patrick Kane's homecoming coincided with the Blackhawks retiring Chris Chelios' jersey. The Red Wings came into this one on a five-game heater, and like all Hawks games, this one was actually pretty close. Ballsy Bedard was even throwing hits on Patrick Kane himself, but after 60 minutes, this was all tied at twos heading into OT. His whole career, Patrick Kane has delivered when the lights are the brightest, and he would do the exact same scoring on the breakaway to win the game for the Red Wings. The NHL scriptwriters were absolutely cooking with this game, and it was a great way to end Sunday night. Before we hop into Monday, I want to thank Vaporfresh for sponsoring today's video. Vaporfresh is a non-toxic plant-based spray that cleans and deodorizes equipment the right way. I live in a condo, so I give my equipment a quick little spray of Vaporfresh, and then I hang it up to dry. When it's time to play, my equipment is back to smelling fresh, and I'm ready to go. You can grab your bottle today for 10% off by clicking the link in our description. Monday, past a milestone. The Caps took care of those sickos over in Ottawa, as the Senators have actually been playing some pretty decent hockey as of late, as they were 7-2-1 coming into this one, but Hendricks Laperriere of the Capitals was their version of a Rentanovi, and he potted two goals in a 6-3 Caps win. The Oilers and Kings renewed their rivalry, and Connor McDavid hasn't scored in nine games, but he's got 23 assists in that time, so quit your yapping. He'd record another two more assists in this one, including this Bouchard bomb here. That Bouchard goal would be the game winner, and the Oilers snap a three-game losing streak and get a much-needed morale win against the Kings. The Bruins face Seattle, and Pasta recorded his 700th career point on what may be the most effortless B-way goal I've ever seen. Buddy is in a rocking chair eating popcorn as he sends this shelf. Disgusting. Pasta's three points in this one wasn't enough to grab the dub as Seattle would take this one in a shootout to close out Monday Night Hockey. Tuesday, Leonardo de Cousins. Even though Sid's back is still sore from Sunday, another two points was needed from him as the Penguins had to fight back from a 2-0 deficit against the Canucks and eventually force this one into OT. Eric Carlson with a gross little shimmy shake at the blue line he then follows up to the net to bang home the loose puck and seal the 4-3 victory over the Canucks. The Red Wings stayed buzzing on Tuesday as they spanked the Caps 8-3 and Patrick Kane extends his point streak to 9 games. Just a dominant outing from Detroit and they look like a team that's really starting to put it together. Now, how about Nick Cousins acting like he got shot and then making a miraculous recovery to jump back into the scrum? It was in the NHL script for Tuesday for Cousins to take a dive and then give an Oscar-level performance before getting up and acting like nothing ever happened. Truly rap behavior, and for that Oscar-level performance, I will now refer to Nick Cousins as Leonardo de Cousins. The Panthers continue to be the most annoying team to play against, and they like it that way as they win 3-2 over Buffalo to go 9-0-1 in their last 10. The NHL script also called for both the Jets and the Flames winning 4-2 in order for both teams to record their fourth straight win. Canadian teams can't thrive too much though, according to Gary Bedman, so 
Tuesday's script called for the Golden Knights to snap the Leafs' six-game win streak. Coach Sheldon Keefe felt the script was a little too obvious. He was absolutely giving it to the refs and he would get tossed from the game. But kudos to the Golden Knights who played a solid 60-minute game. They cruised to a 6-2 win and Tuesday ends with the Leaf Cup parade being temporarily cancelled. Wednesday, Ranger Wagon. Only two games on for Wednesday, but before any hockey went down, there was a relatively big trade with Chris Tanev being traded from the Flames to the Dallas Stars. Tanev is a solid defensive defenseman who literally blocks shots with his face to keep the puck out of the net, and he was a highly coveted piece heading towards the deadline. A deep and quietly deadly Stars team gets even better defensively heading into the NHL playoffs. As for on the ice, the wagon that are the Rangers roll over the Blue Jackets with a 4-1 win. Artemi Panarabred continues his monster season with two goals in this one as the Rangers finish 10-1 in February and are the first team to 40 wins in the NHL. The late game saw the Oilers versus the Blues and after joking that he's decided to stop scoring goals, Connor McJesus decided to put his stand-up jokes to rest and end his 10-game goalless drought with this OT winner. The guy has 25 apples in 11 games, and he just wanted to remind everyone that he can pretty much score at will if he really wants to. Shout out to net front legend Zach Hyman, who also scored his 40th goal in the season in this one. Guy's been an absolute menace in front of the net by parking his ass in the crease and banging home the garbage. The Oilers win and close out a relatively quiet day in hockey for Wednesday. Thursday, Bedard blowout. Thursday kicked off with the Bruins and Golden Knights in the return of former Bruins coach Bruce Cassidy. Before the game, the media asked him how it felt to come back to Boston, and he replied that it's nice to come back with a big shiny ring on his finger. Cheeky. Boston came out pissed and scored three straight in the first, but holding a lead has been challenging for them as of late, as they would give up both a 3-0 and 4-2 lead as Vegas stormed back. Morgan Geeky got his first career hat trick, and late in the third, Mason Lorai buries the game winner as the Bruins snap a three-game losing streak and get the last laugh over Cassidy. Over in the West, the Nate Dog officially hit 100 points on the season versus Chicago, and the Hawks are looking to become the first team relegated in NHL history. 5-0 blowout in this one for the Avs, and a lot of frustration building for Connor Bedard. The kid is on an island over there, and he's getting the Sid treatment with his hands getting whacked and all the extra attention. The frustration is building for the young phenom, but that comes with the territory. After winning at every level and being the best player to touch the ice, it's going to be an adjustment being in a losing environment like Chicago for a little bit. Patrick Kane extends his point streak to 10 games. However, Dwayne the Brock Nelson Johnson is sick of hearing about the wings and he pots two as the Islanders snap Detroit's six game win streak. How about the rookie Logan Stankoven for the Dallas Stars? The 5'8 stud has got three goals in his first four games, and he was an absolute dog on this shift to bang home the loose puck. Jake Ottinger picks up his 100th career NHL win in a 4-1 victory over the Jets, and the Stars sit two points ahead of the Jets for first place in the Central Division. If you're wondering if the Coyotes have won a game yet, the answer is still no. The Leafs were able to officially reinstate the cup raid with a slick draw pass on a breakaway from Mitch Marner to Matthew Nyes. The NHL script is calling for the heavyweight title to come back with the emergence of Matt Rempe. So Ryan Reeves and Liam O'Brien chucked them and it ended with Reeves pointing to the bicep and the boys on the Leaf bench are fired up. Leafs win 4-2, parade is back on and relocation plans for Arizona are officially being finalized after losing 14 straight games. The Panthers become the second team to hit the 40th win mark on the season but the Habs put up a good fight. Like every Panther game, there is some jam and guys mixing it up, but encouraging for Habs fans is Uri Slavkovsky. He scored another goal in this one, and I'm glad to see he's starting to find his confidence in the league. Sam Reinhardt continues his ridiculous season for the Cats as he got two in this one and hitting 40 on the season. Panthers take this game in a shootout and remain the top dog in the NHL at the end of Thursday. Friday, Devil's Dud. You guys are never going to believe this, but the Arizona Coyotes have finally won a game. They made all 18 of their fans sweat for it too, as they jumped out to a three-goal lead in the first, but the Sens scored three straight to tie it back up, and it seemed like this team may never actually win again. Fortunately, a power play goal early in the third for the Yotes allowed them to hang on and bury the empty netter late in the game and the Ottawa Senators go down as the team who lost to the Coyotes. It's been a rough season, Sens fans, but hey, 
At least he got that empty net clapper to fall back on. Speaking of teams who royally disappointed their fans, the Devils are putting on a clinic. Desperately chasing a playoff spot, the Devils need to pick up two points against a brutal Duck team, and it did not go as planned. All-star Frankie Vitrano scored two in this one, and with the Ducks having a 4-3 lead in the dying seconds of the game, Jack Hughes would get a penalty shot. Game is on the line, he can force OT, people pay to watch this guy play, and he delivers an absolute dud. Ducks goalie Lucas Dostal was brilliant stopping Hughes and making 52 saves to lead the Ducks to a 4-3 win. It's ugly right now for Devils fans, and that hot seat for Lindy Ruff just got a lot hotter. Elsewhere in the Metro, the Caps are staying alive in the playoff race with a huge win over the Flyers. Ovi gets one step close to Gretzky and sparked a comeback from a 2-0 deficit that sees the Caps only four points back of the Flyers for third in the Metro to end off Friday. Saturday, fight night. There was a lot of hockey on as usual for Saturday, but let's cover the bigger storylines starting with the Leafs versus Rangers. This was hyped all week as the Rempe versus Reeves fight, but the game itself didn't disappoint whatsoever. The Rangers set the tone early with a goal in the first, and after a lot of talk prior to the game about when this scrap was going to go down, we'd have to wait a little bit longer as Rempe would give Reeves the cold shoulder. Rempe would also lay a huge hit on new Leaf acquisition Ilya Labushkin, and he would have to leave the game with a head injury. The Leafs would take a 3-2 lead early in the third, and it wasn't until five minutes left where we would finally get the heavyweight tilt between Reeves and Rempe. Solid fight, pretty even on both sides, the kid held his own, and it actually sparked a Ranger comeback to force OT with a late goal from Trocek. This one would require a shootout, and a Max Domi finish would give the Leafs their ninth win in their last 10 games, and the parade is fully on. Another team who is on a heater right now is the Nashville Predators. Ever since they got spanked 9-2 by the Stars and had their planned U2 concert cancelled on them because of it, they've been lights out and have won 8 straight. A Cody Glass hat trick would lead to a 5-1 win over the Avs and the Predators are buzzing. The Panthers and Red Wings game had a lot of hate as this potential playoff matchup could be an absolute battle. A lot of post-whistle scrums, as usual, and hits in this one, but Bobrovsky was brilliant in a 4-0 shutout, and Patrick Kane's 10-game point streak comes to an end. The Islanders' Cal Palmieri gets a natural hat-trick against the Bruins, and the Islanders win their third in a row in a 5-1 blowout. The Winnipeg Jets also showed some balls on Saturday after they went down 3-0 to a solid Canes team, and then scored five consecutive goals in the third to win the game. Sean Monaghan, who's been a solid fit for the Jets, potted the game winner off a major whiff from Kochekov. That's ugly. And the Jets slide back into first place in the Central with games in hand. The late game saw the Flames versus the Pens, and we saw yet another way the Penguins can disappoint Sidney Crosby. The Penguins held a 3-1 lead in the third period until Nazem Kadri scored this goal of the year candidate. He puts it through the legs of Achari at his own blue line. Gross. Then he cooks Latang on the outside, attacks the triangle underneath his stick, and drives the net to finish off potentially the goal of the year and the slam dunk winner for the Vapor Fresh Disgusting Goal of the Week. That beautiful goal sparked Calgary to storm all the way back, and with less than a minute left to go in regulation, Igor Sharangovich capitalizes off a brutal turnover from Chris Latang, and that seals the game. Flames win 4 3 in regulation, that's their fifth win in a row. And this was a miserable, miserable way for the Penguins to lose and get zero points out of this one. Yet again, they find a way to let Sid down. Some other big news around the league on Saturday was that the Canucks signed Elias Pettersson to an eight-year deal at $11.6 million a year. Huge ticket and well worth it for one of the game's elite centers. Even though the Canucks have been struggling and playing some mediocre hockey as of late, they finally lock up Pettersson for the future. So... What in the 2024 script surprised you this week? Who are your sleeper teams? Which teams do you think are frauds? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you want to see some of our deeper player breakdowns from this week, click on any of the links here and subscribe to the channel.